Here we go again. Because of persistent low inventory, it looks like we're going to be having another crazy seller's market this year. So one of the things you may be hearing about, whether you're a buyer or a seller, are escalation clauses. Hi, this is Greg Powers with Keller Williams Metropolitan, and this is Real Estate Smarts in roughly under three minutes. Now, in a more normal market, when there's equilibrium between buyers and sellers, a typical offer would be just a flat amount, let's say $500,000, and the other terms would be closing date, earnest money deposit, etc. Um, and a buyer can either accept that offer, uh, they can reject it, just say no, or they can counter offer and suggest a different price. And so it becomes a, a negotiation between that buyer and that seller. But in a seller's market, like we've seen more recently, and like it looks like we're going to be seeing this year, um, it becomes less a negotiation between the buyer and seller and more of a competition between the buyers. And generally, the buyers do not know what the other buyers are going to be offering, so they're competing blindly. So in those situations, a buyer may include an escalation clause in their offer so that they are competing with the other buyers without competing against themselves. So here's what that might sound like in an offer. A buyer is willing to pay $1,000 over and above highest competing bona fide offer up to a maximum price of $335,000. Seller to provide written proof of competing offer. And that's a very typical clause. You have to be able to prove <laughs> that you've got another offer. Now, there are three components to an escalation clause. There's the initial offer price, then there's the increment by which it will ratchet up, and then the cap on that sale price, because you don't want to exceed a certain amount, most likely. So here's how that can work in practice. So let's say your initial offer is $325,000. You're at the ground floor. And then the seller gets an offer of 330,000. Well, your offer climbs up to 331,000, a thousand dollars over that competing offer. Now, if another offer comes in, your offer could get ratcheted up again, but it's not going to exceed that $335,000 cap. Now, there can be some pitfalls, both for sellers and for buyers, in using an escalation clause like that. So you really want a, a professional guidance if you decide to do that. And as I've said elsewhere, uh, the purchase and sale agreement in New Hampshire has 32 blanks and only one of them is the price. So all of the other terms will uh, come into play as well if you're making a decision from the seller standpoint. So you just want to make sure you have that expert guidance uh, to navigate any escalation clauses and other offers or to use them if you're a buyer and trying to compete in the current marketplace. So if there's anything I can help with, don't hesitate to reach out. And if you enjoy these videos, feel free to subscribe on my blog or like my Facebook page, and you can be updated whenever I get put them out. Thank you very much.